Hello, this is Pastor Michael Rode of Glorybound Baptist Church in Kings Mountain, North Carolina. Our church address is 407 Dixon School Road, and uh, we're located right off of Interstate 85, uh, exit number 5, directly across the street from the Kings Mountain Truck Plaza. And uh, we'd like to encourage you to come be with us here at Glorybound Baptist Church. If you're uh, looking for a church or uh, and you don't have a home church, uh, or if you're just passing through the area and looking for a church to go and worship the Lord while you're in the area, we'd love for you to come and be with us. Again, it's 407 Dixon School Road uh, in Kings Mountain, North Carolina, right off of Interstate 85, exit number 5, directly across the street from the Kings Mountain Truck Plaza. Everybody is welcome at Glory Bound Baptist Church. If you're not in church, looking for a church, uh, looking for a home church, uh, then Glory Bound Baptist Church is a church for you. And so we'd like to encourage you to come be with us. Uh, we, we love serving the Lord here. We love uh, worshiping him. He's worthy of all praise and honor and glory that we can give to him. And uh, we're an independent fundamental Bible believing Baptist church. And uh, we stand on the old time way. And uh, if that's what you like. If that's what you're looking for. Uh, then Glory Bound Baptist Church is the church for you. And so I want to uh, encourage you to come be with us. Our Sunday school uh, is at 10 a.m. Our Sunday morning service is at 11 a.m. Our Sunday evening service is at 6 p.m. And our Wednesday night uh, prayer meeting and Bible study uh, is at 7 p.m. Uh, and uh, we also on Easter and, and Mother's Day, Father's Day, other uh, holidays uh, that fall on Sundays, we have church Sunday morning and Sunday night. And uh, we don't shut the doors here. If it's uh, if it's church time, the church doors are going to be open. And so we like to encourage you to come and be with us. All right, I want to get right to it here today. I want to get right into the Word of God. I want to share this message here with you that the Lord laid on my heart. Uh, about a week ago, and, uh, and I want to preach this here today, and I want to share it with you, and so I hope this is a help and a blessing to you uh, here today. I'm going to read one verse to start off with uh, from Psalm chapter number 122, Psalm chapter number 122, and verse number one. The Bible says, I will, uh, excuse me, it says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let me, let me read that verse again. It says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let's pray. Our dear and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for this day and all your blessings. God, I just thank you for this opportunity that I have here today to be able to read and study your word and be able to take the time here today uh, to preach this message and share it with others, uh, this message that you've laid on my heart. God, I pray that you use me here today. God, give me the words to say. And may this message be a help and a blessing to every person uh, that hears this message. God, please use me for your glory. In Jesus Christ's name, I do humbly pray. Amen. Amen. Now, I want you to look again at that verse, Psalm chapter 122 and verse 1. It says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Now, the title of the message here today is Gladness in the Gathered House. Gladness in the Gathered House. Now, I like how this verse starts off with saying, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad. There's a lot of folks that uh, they go to church and uh, they go because they feel like that it's a responsibility. They go because uh, they think it's what they're supposed to do. Some people, uh, they, you can tell when they come into the church house that they don't want to be there. Uh, that they would rather be somewhere else. I don't know about you, but I'm always glad when I'm able to go to the house of the Lord. Amen. I love the Lord Jesus Christ, and I, I appreciate everything that he's done for me. I am not worthy of any blessings that God has bestowed upon my life. The only thing that I know that I am worthy of is to die lost in my sin and bust hell wide open and burn there for all eternity. But I'm glad that Jesus Christ loves me and he's care and he cares for me and he has mercy and and his grace has been shown upon me and I and I want to go to his house and I want to serve him and I want to worship him and I want to be glad when I go into the house of the Lord. We don't need to go uh, with our heads hung low. We don't need to go into the house of God uh with the attitude of uh, I hope the preacher hurries up and gets through the message and gets and gets us out of here. Uh, we don't need to go with the attitude of, uh, I, I'm ready for, uh, I hope they don't have much singing. I hope there's not much preaching. I just want to go and be seen. And so I can say I went to church and then get out of here. Uh, we need to be glad when we go to the house of the Lord. Why? Because that's where God's at. And we're gathered around with God's people and we can hear God's word and we can worship God with others uh, and, and see God do some great and wonderful things in the house of God. And so I don't understand why, if you've got the Lord Jesus Christ living inside of you, why you don't want to go to the house of God. Now, I'm not saying this uh, today or preaching this message to beat anybody up. 
I'm preaching this to kind of get our minds right. See, the Bible tells us that a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. You say, preacher, what are you talking about? Well, if you've got your mind focused on the world and you're trying to go to church, you can't serve two masters. Amen. That's what the Bible tells us. You're either going to serve one or you're going to serve the other. And so I'm preaching this message today to hopefully help us to get our minds focused on what we're supposed to be focused on. And at, that is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that we were created for his good pleasure. And I'm telling you, there's nothing, uh, there's not much more that brings pleasure to God than to be in his house, be happy to be in his house, worshiping and praising him and spending time with him. And so I want to, I want to preach this message here today. Gladness in the gathered house. Gladness in the gathered house. Again, Psalm 122 verse 1 says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Now I've got three things that I want to share with you here on, uh, the gladness, uh, on gladness in the gathered house. Number one, who should be in God's house? Who should be in God's house? Well, I like what the Bible says in Luke chapter number 14. And verse 23 it says, and the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come, uh, compel them to come in that my house may be filled. See, God's desire is for his house to be filled. And we as Christians, we need to understand that today, that uh, when you're not in God's house, when the house of God is open, uh, if you're not there, uh, now if you got a, if, if you're sick and you're running a fever and you're throwing up or, or in the hospital or, or something like that, uh, that's understandable. But to just choose not to go to the house of God, there's no excuse for it. There's no excuse for it. God wants his house to be filled. Luke 14, 23 again says, and the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. God wants his house filled. So who should be in God's house? Number one, who should be in God's house? Our children. It ought to be, we as, as Christian parents, it ought to be our heart's desire to do everything that we can to get our kids in the house of God and, and, and keep them faithful to the house of God and get them involved in the things that are going on at the house of God. I don't understand parents uh, who have kids uh, who live in their house and then allow them to stay home when it comes church time. I, that's not the way that I was brought up. That's not the way that I was raised. Hey, you, I was told, this is what I was told when I was growing up. If I live under my dad's roof, if I live under my mom's roof, if I'm living or staying with my grandparents and I'm under their roof, guess what? When we come Sunday morning, when it's church time, we're all going to be in the house of God. Amen. Hey, parents, it's time for us to stop trying to be our kid's best friend and be their parent. Amen. It's time for us when it's Sunday morning, it's time for us to wake them up and tell them to get up and get dressed because we're going to the house of God. Amen. That's what we need to do. Parents, don't, 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 don't whine and complain and cry when your, when your children become 20, 30, 40 years old and they're not in church and they're living like the world and they're out in the world and they've made a mess out of their life. Don't whine and complain and say you don't understand if you never, if you never made them go to the house of God. You know what? Kids don't want to go. Hey, I understand that sometimes kids, they don't want to get up and they don't want to go. They'd rather stay home and watch cartoons. They'd rather go as they get older and go to the mall, hang out with their friends, go do things that, that young people do. But I'm going to tell you, it's our responsibility. God has entrusted us with these children and it's our responsibility to make sure that our children are in the house of God. Hey, we can, cannot expect our kids when they become adults to have a relationship with the Lord and be rooted, grounded, and settled upon the word of God if we've never had them in the house of God, faithful to the house of God, listening and hearing the word of God. Hey, we don't need to let them have an excuse. If they're living under your roof, they need to be in the house of God. Parents, set the example and make sure that they're in the house of God. I've heard many preachers say this, and, and I can testify to this as well. I'm glad that I had a drug problem when I was a kid. I'm glad that I was drugged to church Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night and revivals and youth services. I'm glad that I was drugged to church because I am where I am today because I had 
family. I had parents. I had grandparents. Thank God for godly grandparents who made sure that I was in the house of God and around the preaching of the word of God and heard southern gospel singing that lifted up the Lord Jesus Christ and magnified his name. Made sure that I went to revivals where there was fiery preaching on the King James Bible and lifted up the Lord Jesus Christ. And I am where I am today and I am who I am today because I had people who made sure as a kid I was in the house of God. Parents, we need to make sure that our children are in church. We need to make sure our friends and our family is in church. You know, I'm glad to know that I'm saved and on my way to heaven. But I want to know, I want to, I want to know without a doubt that my friends are saved and going to heaven and going to be with me. I want to make sure that my family knows Christ as their savior. And when we're all, when we go to heaven, that they'll be in heaven with me. I can't stand the thought here today to know that I have family that may be lost. They don't know Christ as their savior. And I can't stand the thought of knowing that they may die lost in their sin and bust hell wide open. Hey friend, it ought, we ought to be a number one priority in our life to lift the Lord Jesus Christ up and make sure that our friends and our family are in church, in the, in, in the house of God, serving him and know him as their personal Lord and Savior. We need to make sure our neighbors are in church. Hey friend, does your neighbors even know that you're a Christian? Do they see you get up Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and go to the house of God? Do they know that you are saved? Have you shared the gospel with them? Have you ever invited them to church? I know the folks in my neighborhood, they know that I go to church. They know that I'm a pastor. They know that I stand on the word of God. Some of my, uh, some of my neighbors have been, uh, been to our church. You need to make sure that your neighbors are in church. We need to make sure that our coworkers and our classmates are in church. Hey, you know what? Some people, they, they, they talk about their job and they hate their job. And, and, and I was on a job for many years that, uh, that I, I, I liked the work itself, but I didn't like the work environment. And, uh, but you know what? I was there for a reason. Yes, I needed to provide for my family and, and, and somebody, and by the way, a man that doesn't work and provide for his family, the Bible says it's worse than an infidel. Amen. But we ought to work and provide for our families. But you know what? While we're on that job, we need to realize that God placed us there for a reason and that that's kind of our mission field. And so while they're on the job providing for our families, we also need to be working for the Lord. We need to make sure that our, 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 our co-workers and the kids that are in school need to make sure that their classmates, first and foremost, know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. And then need to make sure that they're going to church somewhere. And if they're not, it ought to be your goal to invite them and encourage them and compel them, as Luke 14, 23 says, compel them to come to the house of God with you and worship and serve the Lord together with you and lift the Lord Jesus up together. It's our job to do this. God wants the brokenhearted in the house of God. Hey, you know what? A lot of a lot of Christians, uh, there's a lot of Christians that have uh, have broken hearts over different things, whether it was something that went on in the church or or whether it's something that's going on in the job or within the family or or whatever the reason may be. There's a lot of folks uh, out there who are, who are broken hearted. I want you to know that the Lord mends broken hearts. And the best place for somebody who is broken hearted and discouraged is to be in the house of God with the people of God, hearing the preaching of the word of God and praising the word of God. Hey, I, I like that one song that talks about how you can praise the hurt away. Hey, there's nothing like lifting up the Lord Jesus Christ and, and, and realizing just how good he's been to you. See, we as Christians, a lot of times, we focus in on the negatives in our life and we overlook all the positives in our life. And we need to realize that Jesus has blessed us far more than the problems that we have. And, and even in the midst of our trials and our troubles and our struggles and the storms of life, Jesus Christ is still blessing us in the midst of those times that make us brokenhearted and feel discouraged. Jesus is working at that time as well. And so the best place to be is in the house of God, around the people of God, around the praises of God, around the preaching of God, for God to be able to mend that broken heart. Staying at home, laying in the bed, laying on the couch, Wallering in self-pity will get you nowhere except further break your heart. But if you suck it up and go to the house of God and say, Lord, I'm putting you first. It's amazing what God can do. There have been times in my life that I was discouraged and brokenhearted and, and didn't understand why things were going the way they were going. But I made up my mind I was going to be faithful to the Lord. Why? Because he's been faithful to me. And if we make up our mind that we're going to be faithful to the Lord, you know what? We realize that the things that we thought were major problems, they were nothing. 
Nothing is impossible with God. God can do all things. The sick need to be in the house of God. Now, I understand if you're running a fever and you're throwing up and things like that and you're contagious, hey, don't bring it here. Keep it at home. All right. And, let, and we'll be praying for you and we'll pray that the sickness goes away uh, and, and that you can be back at church at the next service time. But I'm talking about those who have just who have ongoing health problems, pain, aches and pains and uh, and, and and even some things that are even more severe, cancer and, and, and other things like that. I know, I understand uh, uh, that it's hard uh, sometimes when you're in this kind of condition uh, to be able to make it to the house of God. I understand that. Uh, but I also know that you're able. Uh, in most situations, in a lot of situations, you're able. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of folks going to hear me say that and say, oh, you have no idea. You've not walked a mile in my shoes. And you're right. I'm not. And I thank God that, that I, I have it. And I'm praying for you. But I know this. I've seen people who were battling cancer, who were dying with cancer, was near death, who was still faithful to the house of God all the way up until the time God called them home. You know what? God honors that faithfulness. I think about uh, my uh, a good example that I can give you is I think about uh, my papa. He was my uh, other than Lord Jesus Christ. He was my hero. Uh, he won me to the Lord when I was just just a boy when I was five years old, and and uh, he he was my Sunday school teacher at, uh, when I was younger, and uh, and he was the youth leader in the church that I was in when I was younger, and uh, he he taught me so many things about the Word of God and and about life, and uh, and I, I loved him so much, and and I miss him. He's been with the Lord now. Uh, for for a few years now, and I miss him so much. I know I'm going to see him again. Thank God for that. Amen. Uh, but I, I do miss him. But I remember when he was battling with that cancer, he didn't give up on the Lord, and he didn't stay at home and, and waller in his self-pity and wonder why this was happening to him. His attitude was, I'm a winner either way. If God heals me of this cancer and takes it away, then hallelujah, I'm a winner. But if he chooses not to take this away from me, I'm a winner either way because I'm saved and I know I'm going to heaven. And my grandpa stayed faithful to the Lord and didn't miss a service. He was there every service. And I remember the Sunday before he died. I, I thank God for this. I thank God for this. And I'm bragging on the Lord, not me or, or, or anybody else. I'm bragging on the Lord. My grandpa, when he was sick and um, a month, a month before he, he passed away, he stood up before our church, our, our church, Glory Bound Baptist Church. We just started out and we were uh, in our first little storefront building and um, our church was about two months old, two, two and a half months old. And uh, we're just starting out and my grandpa, I stood before the church and testified and said that uh, he thanked the Lord for saving him and being good to him and, and, and blessed him in so many ways and letting him see so many things uh, in his lifetime. And uh, he said, but you know what? He said, there's this, he said, there, I, I have no regrets. There's not anything else left for me to see or do. He said, God has really been good to me. And my grandpa, uh, his testimony, he could have pre his testimony pretty much preached his funeral. Uh, but my grandpa stood before the church and he said that if there was one thing that he would like to see before the Lord called him home was to see our little church that had just started, uh, to see it break a uh, hundred, uh, in attendance on one Sunday morning service before he went on home to be with the Lord. Well, folks in the church started praying and, and we got together, had, uh, had all night prayer meeting and, uh, at, uh, and, and then our folks went out and they started, uh, knocking on doors and inviting people, calling people, texting people, hitting them up on Facebook, emailing people, doing everything they could to invite people, uh, to come to church. And uh, I remember on the, the Sunday before Christmas that year, 2012, uh, I remember, uh, on that Sunday morning, my grandpa came in, he was weak and we had a special chair set up for him. Uh, that was a little bit more comfortable than all the rest in the church. Uh, and uh, I remember him coming in. He was so sick and so weak. Uh, but his face lit up when he walked in and he seen how full the church was. God blessed us that Sunday morning with 112. And uh, we had 54 first-time visitors. Uh, we saw, I think it was like 16 or 17 people get saved. Uh, and it was a wonderful, one of the best services of my life. But the point is, is he went. And he could have stayed home. But if he'd stayed home, he wouldn't have seen that. And if he had stayed home and, and if he had not got up and testified and shared this before the church, that might not have impacted others to do what they did and those 16 people might not have got saved. So those of you that are sick and struggling, by you making the effort to get up and come to church, and, and we understand that it's hard and it's difficult, but if you take that step of faith and trust God, 
and, and, and make that step and, and come to the house of God, even in the midst of your sickness, you have no idea how much that can touch and bless somebody else who in the church may be brokenhearted, who may be discouraged, but then see you trusting the Lord and serving the Lord. Your, that testimony there can help a lot of other people. So I want to encourage you. I'm not just saying this because I need church attendance to go up. I think all preachers, if they're they're in this for the right reasons, seeing people get saved, seeing people serve the Lord and have a close relationship with the Lord, they would say the same thing that I'm saying here today. I, I want you, please, uh, to, to really think about this and pray about this. Your testimony uh, could really be a help to somebody. Uh, people are watching us. People are watching us. Another group of people that need to be in the house of God are the lost. We need to go out. Luke 14, 23 says, And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. A lot of folks, uh, they're waiting for the lost people to come to their church uh, so they can present the gospel to them and see them get saved. And if that's what you're waiting on, then you're going to be waiting a long time because a lot of times, it, there, there's not a lot of times where just you have masses of amounts, large groups of lost people coming to your church unless you go out into the highways and hedges, unless you go where they are and share the gospel with them, and compel them. That word compel means to draw them, to encourage them, to push, to urge, to get them to come into the house of God. We need to get them here. Why? Because the gospel is preached here. Number two, gladness in the gathered house. Uh, one, Number one, who should be in God's house? Our children, our friends and family, our neighbors, our co-workers and classmates, the brokenhearted, the sick, and the lost. Number two, how do, how do we get them in God's house, Luke, Luke 14, 23 says, And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. That word compel means to push, to urge, to press. You know what? Some people say, well, I don't want to push them too much because I might push them away. Hey, if they're not here, they're already away. And if they're not, if they're away, they're not hearing the gospel. And if they're not hearing the gospel, they're going to die lost in their sins and go to hell. And so, so don't, let's not use that as an excuse. Well, I'm afraid I'll push them away. No, we need to push them. We need to press them. We need to let them know that there is a hell and that people do die and go there and that they will burn there for eternity without the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We, that's what we need to do. But at the same time, we need to let them know that Jesus loves them and cares about them. And he doesn't want them to go to hell, but that he has made a way of, made a, made a way of escape for them through the shed blood of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. And we need to share that gospel with them. We need to do all that we can to compel them to come in. Uh, I, you know, some people... Uh, uh, you know, say, well, all these churches having all these dinners all the time. All they're doing is bribing people to come to church. I'm going to tell you right now, if a piece of fried chicken gets a lost person to come to church to hear the gospel and have a chance to get saved, then we'll, we'll, we'll serve fried chicken. Amen. If it takes a cheeseburger and fries to get them to come to church, hey, whatever it takes, whatever it takes to get them to come to the house of God to hear the gospel and get saved, it's worth it. Amen. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out to the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Number three, why should we compel them to come in God's house? Luke 14, 23 tells us that my house may be filled. God wants his house full. We as Christians, pastors, preachers, Christian workers, we shouldn't be satisfied with a church that's 50% full. We shouldn't be satisfied with all the chairs or all the pews full. We should want to fill it up and, and, and pack it out and then get to the point to where we need to do what's necessary to be able to, 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 to make room for more. We need to do all that we can. Why? Because God wants his house full. God wants this house here on this earth, this church house full. He wants your church house full. But the reason why he wants that full, it's not so that you can boast a number. Not so that we can brag and say, oh, we had so many people here. It drives me crazy when somebody asks you, how's your church doing? You tell them, oh, the Lord's doing good. He's blessing. We've seen... Uh, several souls saved and the Lord's adding to the church. And then they quickly respond with, uh, yeah, we had we had such and such number of people at our church today. You know, I thank God you had that number of people at your church. But we ought to rejoice together in knowing that there was people at your church serving the worship of the Lord and there was people that got saved. And I want to rejoice with you in the fact that there was people at your church and that the church house was full and people got saved. Hey, we ought to rejoice in that. We ought not just be quick just to boast and brag on a number, I mean, because it's not about us. It's all about the Lord Jesus Christ. If it wasn't for Jesus, we wouldn't have anybody here. There wouldn't be anybody in your church. 
Jesus is the one that does it all. We're just the, the we're just his hands and his feet. We're just the instruments, the tools, the objects, the vessels that he uses to be able to get the job done. So God wants his house full. Not only that, <clears throat> the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter number 10 and verse 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. Hey, God commanded that we go to church. God commanded that we not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. God commanded that his house be filled. But more, so much more that we're, because we're in these last days. Hey, we're in the age of, uh, of the great falling away where people are, are turning away, uh, from solid found, uh, good, good, solid, firm doctrine and turning to fables and lies and, 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 uh, and listening to, to preachers who preach false doctrine and preach what they want to hear, heaping themselves teachers having itching ears. They, they want to hear things that make them feel good. They don't want to hear things that step on their toes. And so we as Bible believing Christians in these last days where there's so many false prophets, so many, uh, false teachers and false preachers out there, uh, and so many different false religions being spread around the world, so much more in these last days. We need to be faithful to the house of God so that we can stay strong in the word, stay strong uh, and be united together to be able to go out and, and stand against the devil and, 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 and serve the Lord and see souls get saved. And then the Bible also tells us uh, this in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verses 1 through 4, is the gospel. This is the main reason why we should compel people to come in to God's house. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verses 1 through 4, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand, by uh, which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. <clears throat> verses 3 and 4, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, According to the scriptures, the gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are saved by grace through faith. It is the gospel that we put our faith and our trust in. It's not about what we can do, but rather it's about what Jesus Christ has already done. He took your sin and my sin upon him and willingly laid down his life for us. He shed his life's blood for us and he gave his life for us. They took his body down off the cross. They placed his body in a borrowed tomb. And three days later, God raised him from the dead on, according to the scriptures. Amen. That is the gospel. Nothing more and nothing less. And it's the gospel is one, is the main reason why that we need the house full. Hey, I'm here because of the gospel. Jesus saved me because of the gospel. And because of Jesus saving me, because of the gospel, and because I realize that Jesus loves me, I want to be faithful to him and I want to be in his house. And not only that, because he saved me and he showed me his love and I want to be in his house, I want to do all that I can to compel others to come in so that they too can know the love of Christ and know the gospel and put their faith and their trust in it so that they can be saved and worship in the house of God. There's gladness in the gathered house. I'm going to tell you, I'm glad to see children in the house of God. I'm excited that tonight we've got uh, tag team preaching. We've got uh, seven preachers in our church, including myself, uh, that, that preach. And so last Sunday night we had three preachers uh, preach, uh, three of our young preachers preach. By the way, most of our preachers, uh, well, all of our preachers uh, are uh, 32 years old and younger. So people that say uh, that young people don't like the old time way are full of beans. Um, we had three preachers that preached uh, this past Sunday night. Uh, one of those uh, is 21. One uh, is, uh, is, uh, is uh, 19 years old uh, and the other 16 years old. And they preached and I'm gonna tell you, God moved. Uh, and I'm excited and that blesses me to see God calling young men to preach his word and seeing young people want to be faithful to the house of God and serve him. Uh, I'm sorry, I said there was one 21, 19 and, and 16. It was, really, it was 20, uh, both, we had two that's in their 20s and one that's 16. Uh, and then tonight, uh, we're going to have, my, my brother's going to preach tonight. He's, he's 31. He's 31 years old. Uh, and then uh, we'll have another preacher that's going to preach tonight that's 19. Uh, and then it just thrills my soul. Uh, my, my son, my youngest son, uh, is going to preach tonight. He's eight years old. You say, oh, he don't know what he's doing. Well, I'm going to tell you this. He's saved. 
He's put his faith and his trust in the Lord. He loves the Lord and he reads and studies his Bible. And I, and he showed me the outline that, that he wrote down. I didn't help him not one bit. And, and, and he showed me his outline. And I'm going to tell you, you tell me, you cannot tell me that, that he doesn't know what he's doing. I read that outline. He loves the Lord and God's been good to him and he knows this and he wants to serve the Lord. It's not me making him do this. It's because God's put it upon his heart. And it ought to thrill us that children want to serve the Lord. It blesses my heart every every Sunday when we see our bus kids come in here. It thrills my heart when we see our children's choir <clears throat> come up into the main sanctuary uh, and sing on some Sunday mornings and see them praising the Lord and, and hearing them say amen. And, and it, it's, it's a blessing. It, I'm glad when I see the kids. I'm glad when I see my family in the house of God. I'm glad when I see friends come to church with me. Hey, I'm glad when, when there's been times that my neighbors have come to church and it thrills my heart to know that I had some neighbors, uh, that wasn't in church and, and they come and they visited our church. They visited a, a few other like-minded churches and then they got rooted in, uh, to a, uh, to a church, uh, that's like-minded like ours. And I know the pastor there and it blesses my heart to know <clears throat> that they're rooted into a Bible believing church. We ought to be glad when we see our coworkers and our classmates come to church. Um, <clears throat> you know, we ought to be glad when we see those who are discouraged come to the house of God and get help. We ought to be glad when we see the sick come and praise the Lord for his goodness and his mercy and his grace. We ought to be glad and excited when we see the lost come in and hear the truth, hear the gospel and get saved. There, sh there, there should be gladness in the gathered house. God wants his house full. He wants you in the house of God. He wants me in his house. And he wants us to be glad in his house, worshiping and praising. Folks, we've got too much, too much, too many blessings that God has blessed us with for us not to be glad in the gathered house. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you, if you're not going to church anywhere, to please get rooted into a Bible-believing church. If you live in our area, if you live around the Kings Mountain area and you don't have a church, Please come. Please come and gather with us in this glad, godly house here. We'd love to have you. And if you feel like that this is not where God wants you, then I'll be more than glad to share with you several different churches in our area that love the Lord and stand upon the word and are good Bible-believing churches. I would rec highly recommend several churches to you. The whole point is, this is not a competition. I just want to see people get saved, love the Lord, be faithful to his house and serve him and do all that they can to help others come to know Christ as their Savior and continually repeat the process. Gladness in the gathered house. Let's be glad and gather together in the house of the Lord. This is Wednesday. Tonight, our service is at 7 p.m. I want to encourage you to come. We're going to have tag team preaching tonight. We're going to have a prayer meeting, tag team preaching. Hey, if you need a prayer, please come. We'll pray with you. If you need want to hear some good preaching by some young men, please come. I promise you, you'll hear some wonderful preaching of God's word tonight. Please come. We'd like to invite you to come. Again, Glory Bound Baptist Church, 407 Dixon School Road, Kings Mountain, North Carolina, right off Interstate 85, exit number five, directly across the street from the Kings Mountain Truck Plaza. I'd like to encourage you to come. God bless you. We love you. We're praying for you and hope to see you soon.